We just got a massive update about the Joker DLC that could change everything. Some would say I'm the reverse. What did you do, Rack Nation? I'm back with Super News, bringing you the latest superhero news in five minutes or less because I respect your time if you subscribe. So if this information was valuable, hit the like button so it will reach more people. But if it wasn't for you, change it to a dislike. This reveal came at the perfect time for Rocksteady's latest Arkham game. After a fairly strong start, being the most pre-ordered game on PlayStation and a number three overall in sales for February and January, Suicide Squad has seen a steep decline in interest due to lack of content, most confusing of all, not releasing any new skins for nearly two months, despite their entire monetization strategy relying on cosmetics since the DLC content is all free. Plus, there are still several game-breaking bugs that players are still waiting to get fixed, including the inability to log into the game. The lack of marketing also hasn't helped and has drawn a lot of criticism from players. After revealing the Joker DLC wouldn't be releasing until March 28th and the next patch wouldn't be coming until the 26th, the studio went mostly quiet on social media besides showcasing some creator builds and a Friday blog that offered nearly no new information beyond some very confusing teases of upcoming weapons from season one with no actual information on what they do, which is a night and day difference compared to the communication before launch. To make matters worse, but also kind of better, the game has been on sale for as much as 40% off and can be bought for as low as $40 on Steam and $50 on console. But now that we're less than a week from the launch of season one, Rocksteady has dropped a full roadmap for the DLC, this new Joker gameplay trailer, as well as a massive blog full of patch notes for the update coming this Tuesday, which will include the season one content on top of a giant list of much needed bug fixes and balancing changes. You can read the full list of bug fixes on the blog, but what stands out are definitely the ones to address players being unable to increase their mastery level, which has meant they are for the most part locked out of end game progression. They released a hot fix that solved the problem I had playing multiplayer and more fixes for matchmaking will be coming in the patch as well. It's good to know they also listen to player feedback and will be adding some balancing changes, specifically altering the boom modifier so it no longer triggers on shield harvest or suicide strikes and nerfs to the extremely annoying sniper enemies. Season 1 will be broken up into two episodes, both releasing six weeks apart. Episode 1 Fear will launch next week and include the Joker as a playable character, along with the debut of the Battle Pass, which will have a free and premium tier. You can earn XP for the Battle Pass by simply playing the game, and if you bought the deluxe edition, you can unlock the entire thing for free. This battle pass is of course no FOMO, so the items on it will never expire. One of the new skins you'll be able to earn on it will be the Wayne Tech set, which seems to be heavily inspired by the Injustice games. Based on the wording of the blog, some of the Wayne Tech will be on the free tier, and others will be on the premium track, with the Deadshot version confirmed to be earnable for free. The update will include new missions, as well as this Joker-themed map for the endgame content, and a new Brainiac boss fight, which this time will be a reskin of the Green Lantern fight from the main campaign. I seriously hope future seasons come up with more creative ways for us to fight Brainiac, or ideally, let us fight somebody else. We're also getting new gear. Season 0 launched with the Bane Infamy set, and Season 1 kicks off with Scarecrow themed gear that will introduce the fear and horror effect, which would have been awesome to see in action, you know, for marketing purposes. We're also getting new notorious villain weapons based on Mad Hatter, Dr. Poison, and Polka Dot Man. Six weeks later, assuming no more delays, will be the launch of Episode 2, Duality, which will bring a new Brainiac boss fight, this time a reskin of the Superman boss battle from the campaign, along with new enemy types. Well, the same enemies with different infusions on them, which are basically Justice League themed powers. This update will also bring in the infamy set inspired by Two-Face and notorious weapons inspired by fan-favorite villains Reverse Flash and Black Manta, which I'm very excited to try out. At some point, we're also getting a new set of weapons from a new manufacturer, the Inter Gang. These are designed to launch with multiple projectiles per shot and are best used in close range. If you're a fan of making builds, this is all potentially very exciting, assuming the new weapons are both interesting and powerful. Also, of course, assuming all the fixes work and there are no new major problems. There is time for Rocksteady to turn things around since there is still genuine interest in Suicide Squad. If they write this ship, this could be a truly huge year for WB in their DC superhero games based on what else looks like is coming this year. I'll break that down in the next video on screen.